Welcome to the Every Night is Game Night preview series, the show where designers and publishers share their passion and answer critical questions about their Kickstarter projects. If you're on the fence about a pledge, this is the show for you. Every Night is Game Night preview series, episode 24. Graphic novel adventures from Van Ryder Games. Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome back to Every Night is Game Night preview series, the, at this point, weekly podcast that talks about Kickstarters and the all those things that are on that site that will grab you by the wallet and rip out all of your money. Uh, this week, we have, I, I'm really excited about this week. I'm, I'm excited about all the projects. But this week, you guys know me, I'm the thematic gamer. This is right in my wheelhouse. Uh, we are talking graphic novel adventures. We're going to talk about all the stuff that's going on here. That's from Van Ryder Games. Actually, we are going to take this in a little bit of a different direction because, unfortunately, both AJ and Evan Derek, who are from Van Ryder Games, were unavailable for this because they were really busy. They just got off of the big score Kickstarter. They're launching this uh, graphic novel adventures Kickstarter, so they're super busy. So I have enlisted the help of some friends who are going to talk about the review copy of the game Captive that we got, which is one of the graphic novel adventures, uh, two dear friends that I've uh, gotten to know in the solo community. So um, the first, you have heard her voice a couple of times, and I think it's fair to consider her a regular ENGN correspondent. This is Liz Davidson from the Beyond Solitaire blog. Hey, I'm happy to be back. All right. And we have another guest, a debut. Uh, who has a another blog uh, uh, called Single Handedly? Uh, she is Wendy Barlow. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to That's be here. Excellent. So uh, AJ was good enough. He put out the call on Twitter uh, for people to sign up for review copies of Captive. Of course, we all jumped on that. We all signed up and we got our copies. And we have been talking about it on private little channels and everything ever since. So we figured, why the heck not? Let's do a podcast and tell you all about them and see if they are worth your hard-earned cash. So um, actually, before we get started, uh, Liz, we know all about you, but Wendy, tell us a little bit more about yourself and uh, how you got into this whole solo thing. Well, um, I got into solo gaming because I just love gaming so much, and I couldn't get people to play with me enough to satisfy my needs. So <laughs> I decided to just start solo gaming, um, and I was amazed by how many games are out there that now have solo variants or just built for solo gamers. Um, so it's been a real eye-opener for me, and so through my blog, I'm trying to bring that to other people also. All right, very cool. Uh, and just like Liz, you are a teacher as well. I'm not sure what the, cor what the correlation is between solo players and teachers. Maybe we're also burned out. We don't want to go to game night. <laughs> I don't want to talk to anybody no, anymore. I, I do have a game night. I have a regular game night. Oh, wow. Look at you. Look at I you. just also really like to play by myself. It's It's like a me time thing. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah. For me, it's it's de-stressing. You know, you've had a bad week. I can go, you know, shoot up some aliens and things like that or, you know, battle in arenas and just kind of de-stress after a long week. Or so. rescue our daughters from kidnappers. Exactly. Nice segue. Good segue. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay. So, um, so we are going to talk about the graphic novel adventures, which is currently live on Kickstarter. Uh, this is a series of choose your own adventure graphic novels. So I think we're all familiar with choose your own adventure books from our childhood. Uh, they don't have to be necessarily games per se. It's just, you know, you follow along on the story, you turn to this page, that page, the other page, and you go into dead ends and you discover clues and all that kind of stuff. This game, um, the graphic novel, what the graphic novel adventures do is they kind of gamify that process a little bit. Uh, so these were published in France about a couple of years ago, and Van Ryder took a look and said, oh, this is cool. Let's bring this to the solo community here in the States. So what they've done is they have selected five of those graphic novels, and they have brought them to us. Uh, the first one, which we read, was Captive, which was kind of a modern kidnapping adventure. There's Tears of the Goddess. Bounty Hunter story chasing some thieves in an Asian setting. Loop Guru, which is French for a werewolf. You are a werewolf and you're uh, solving some mysteries. Uh, and also leveling up and adjusting to new abilities, which is pretty cool. Uh, a really ambitious one called Your Town, which is city builder. In the Old West, you actually get to build a city as long while you're doing the adventure, which is pretty cool. And of course, it's, you know, these type of adventures. You have to have a Sherlock Holmes story. 
Uh, this one comes with four, and we get to solve some cases along with Sherlock Holmes and Watson. You guys took a look at the uh, project, right? Uh, mm-hmm. What are what what are we thinking? Just you know, kind of splash on the page. Like, okay, did you guys back it? Are you guys interested? What's going on? I'm a day one backer. I went for it. I know that this is my kind of thing, so I'm already committed. I did not pay for the extra fast shipping because I'm too. I'm more patient than that. But I definitely <laughs> went for the full set. Yeah, I went into um, it. There. They're so different. Each one of these books is just so different from the art style to the genre. It was just – it was a lot to take in. So I didn't back it first day, but um, yeah, it definitely made my list. <laughs> definitely, yeah. Um, yeah, that's t- I'm looking at them and I'm like, you know, my, my finger is hovering over the back button. I'm looking like, I have, I have time stories. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, uh, like, I, I have all these other things and uh but i am so like you know just tempted by these things so we're maybe maybe you guys can convince me to back by the end of the pod that we'll, we will definitely mm. see uh that but well, not for a lack of interest i'm definitely interested <laughs> well i got plans for these too because these are exactly i'm a high school teacher these are the perfect thing like once i've worked through them i'm just leaving my classroom to tempt nerds who don't know it yet <laughs> oh, just, nerds just like, in training! <laughs> nerds in training. You know, I'm a uh, in the study hall or the library, just gonna like, leave a trail of uh, books just in the <laughs> middle of the room. It's like, ooh, Tales of the Goddess. Ooh, captive. It all exactly. leads to her classroom where she's sitting there with like a big, massive game set up, just waiting for people to join her. I oh. see it now. Every oh. Friday, they're in there. I just, I just always need more. You know. You got it. <laughs> Okay, so um, we have all played Captive, which is the first uh, book. Uh, just to give you a quick run through of how this whole thing works, uh, at least for Captive, like I wanted to just kind of get that out of the way first because not all the books are going to work quite the same. But um, I think, you know, I think you get a basic sense of how this works if once we talk about Captive. So, um, like I was saying before, uh, this depicts a man whose daughter was kidnapped. The daughter was taken to a secluded mansion, and the ransom note was left saying that the man had to come alone with a wad of cash. Uh, The man goes to the mansion on his motorcycle, and dot, dot, dot. (laughs) That's basically the setup of the story. I can't give you more without spoiling stuff. How the actual mechanics of the book work is that you, um, it's a comic book, and the comic book panels depict uh, scenes that are going on in the mansion. And each panel will have like a series of doors, and the doors will have numbers on them. So what you do is you, you if you go through the left door, the right door, the left door is going to be number 64. The right door is going to be number 25. You pick which door you want to go to. You turn to that panel and you follow whatever it says. So that's kind of how it works. So in a normal book, it would be a page number. But this one, you're actually going through panel, panel, panel. So it actually you actually get a lot more bang for your buck because you're not this, you're not taking the whole page. You just, you know, they're able to kind of put jam a lot of story into a single page. And the books are how long? About 120, 140 pages? I'm not really sure. Uh, I have mine here. Yeah. It is 281 on the actual story, and then there's some annexes in the back. Right. Yeah. So that's how many frames that you're going to get. So that's a lot of content that you're going to be able to walk through. Uh, so you walk through a door, you go through the panel, like I said, and then you kind of don't do what it says. Uh, in this particular book, there's a series of hidden numbers. So uh, every once in a while, you're going to run into a frame that has a hidden number. <laughs> I heard Wendy grunt back there. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why we're grunting is uh so when you run into a hidden number you go to that panel so uh it, that number could be pretty hidden and we'll get to that in a second uh so you know it could be like on a uh a bookshelf so then you see a number on the bookshelf and then you go to that page number and it actually zooms in the bookshelf and gives you like a little cutscene or uh a, a closer look at the bookshelf or what it is uh, it was not immediately clear to us off the directions that if you see the number, you actually go to that panel. <laughs> Some of us, maybe it was I, clear to others. Not really. <laughs> I picked it up, but I think it's because actually I had heard the podcast that, um, AJ Porfirio did with, um, Oh no, the, the one player about. podcast, one player podcast. Yep. Albert so and they had mentioned it. So I saw like a secret looking number and I was like, aha, I know what to do because I've already heard someone talk about it. Well, see, for me, it was, for me, it's, I've played a lot of Arkham, the living card game, Arkham Horror, the living card game. And they say, you know, if you find something, just scribble it down. Like three days later, maybe you'll find something out about it. Mm. So I was just scribbling numbers down, you know, Ted Krasinski style in my book and uh, not knowing what these numbers were for. Um, thinking, you know, oh, one day, one, they'll say, hey, if you scribble this number down, this wonderful thing will happen. And it just never happened. <laughs> <laughs> just never happened. 
I was really gun shy about spoiling myself because, like, I don't want to just go ahead in the book willy nilly. He's like, oh, it's a three. It doesn't mean I have to go to a three. I might spoil myself. Dumb. Just just go to the page number and mm-hmm. and it'll work out. Uh, so once we figure that out, we were able to kind of breeze through the book. And it's a it's a pretty challenging thing. We'll definitely get into the challenge aspect of it in a second. Um, so that's kind of how the 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 puzzle works. Uh, that's the that's how the book works itself. In terms of your own character, you do get to develop a character that has. Uh, three stats uh, has like will, dexterity, and strength. And depending on where you go in the book, you're gonna have to make checks, or I mean, not like roll anything, but like if your strength is seven, go to this thing. If your strength is less than seven, go to this other page. Uh, so you know, so you're able to kind of go through it as a character. Your character has hit points. If it takes too much damage, then you die, and you have to reset the whole book. Uh, so this, so that's how they get the game aspect in there, and they really kind of get the immersion going uh, in that respect. Uh, a couple of things, like they was like Wendy was saying, uh, you have not only the numbers, you have the appendices. So you know, like in any good mystery novel, you get to zoom in and look at some random newspaper or diary or whatever it is. All the trappings of a good choose your own adventure book right here in this package. Uh, so I think that's about it for the description. Did I miss anything? I think in the very very back there's also that achievement section, right, where you can if you oh yeah if you win if you win quote unquote uh, you yeah. Can, yeah, if you quote unquote win, I did air quotes, but no one saw me. Uh, it has the, <laughs> the achievement page that if you finished your adventure, you can get some achievements in there too for bonus points. So that's kind of cool too. Got it. Yeah, it kind of clued me into some alternative little story tracks I could go back and find. Mm-hmm. After after you've gone through it a couple of times, it kind of you you look at it and you say, "Oh, hey, I'm gonna try that next time." Yeah, so it has some cool stuff in there too. So there is actually a little bit of replayability in the sense that you can go through the book again to kind of find what you the path that you didn't take. Um, but once you're done with the, once you're done with it, you're done with it. Like it's a disposable artifact, so it's not like anything that you can kind of replay. Like a lot of these kind of books. But it's easy to share. Very easy to share with someone too. Yes. You know. Oh yeah. Liz is leaving trails around her her, her school. <laughs> <laughs> a perfect fit for like a library setting. I'll, t- I'll Absolutely. say that. Uh, okay, so before we get into the our, I think our, our impressions are all generally positive, but what I wanted to do first was I wanted to get into some comparisons with other kind of media that we've encountered in, you know, back in the day. So obviously the first comparison is, you know, old school choose your own adventure books like Funny Fantasy or whatever it is. Are you guys veterans of that stuff? Oh gosh, yes. Yes. I used to lock myself in rooms and just like read it all the time. I used to try <laughs> to find like every path possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, love that. Oh yeah. How, but, how, do you, how did this compare? For me, um, the original books gave you because it was page by page. It gave you more uh, dialogue, I guess. This one was very light on dialogue for me, um, so it was more like visual, obviously, because it's a graphic novel. So it kind of took what was going on in my head and put it on paper instead. So that was a, that was kind of a cool transition for me to see. Um, I kind of like this better because it was qu- I felt it was quicker for me. To mm-hmm. just kind of flip through the pages and take in the picture real quick, so it it definitely fit into a you know more of a crunch time as as opposed to sitting down and reading through the page pages. It also felt to me like a little bit more exploratory. Like when you're going through a story, it's like you get on rails and you just keep going, keep going, and one event after another. But in this, you're actually using the panels to explore rooms, so you can go back, you can go through a different door. If you're keeping track of where you've been, it's it's actually a little bit more flexible for me. It reminds me more of like a point and click video game in some ways. Right, like uh, you mentioned Broken Sword in the preview you did for us. Oh my god, yes. I love Broken Sword. I love stuff like Evil Under the Sun. Like, I like all those, like, mystery games where you go around and you have to talk to the right people. You have to find (laughs) the right items. You have to have them in your inventory. And you have to figure out how to combine stuff to get to the next part of the game. And this this really brought back those feelings for me. Those are, yeah. yeah. I'm saying those are so silly because, like, you have to get the collection plate and you have to put the chainsaw on the collection plate (laughs) and you have to put it next to the ceiling fan and break the ceiling fan and drop it down into the, you know, the vat of jello. It's like, ah! (laughs) Yeah, this this was much better. It's much more straightforward than that. But it it brought back those childhood feelings of, like, discovery Mm. that I really liked. And also those branching pathways reminded me a lot, like, I, I, I play a lot of video games, so it made me think of visual novels or something like, you know, I've played things like 999 or, you know, Zero Escape, you know, those sorts of games. I'll play through every single branching pathway until I can get the true ending or whatever, and or like, you know, all the Danganronpa scenarios. And this sort of felt like that, like going back through to look for every dead end, every pathway. Yeah, there was definitely a like, okay, next time I'm definitely going to take that door. 
especially if you didn't have a very happy ending. Um, <laughs> so some, you know, <laughs> sometimes you try to backtrack and say, where did it go wrong? Where did it go so wrong? Of which there um, are so many ways oh to die. There are you so are going many. to die all over the place. And you get to restart your character. So like let's say you start your you built your character a certain way, lots of strength, no will, and you find out that it just there's all sorts of stuff that attacked the heck out of your will and you know, you can really kind of tweak things like that and you know, just restart hey, over and over again. Replayability. The more you die, the more play you get out of it. <laughs> There also was, and I don't think we touched upon this, I think Liz mentioned it briefly, there was actual item collection, too, in the book. Mm -hmm. So there were branching pathways if you have a flashlight or if you have, you know, the necklace or something like that. You know, there are branching pathways that also have items. You have a choice to pick some items up, too. So that that was kind of, like like Liz said, hearkening of a a video game adventure where you stick it in your pack and you keep walking. So that's one that got me because this okay completely sidebar, but what the heck? We're in a podcast. Well, I can say whatever I want. Um, so like when you some in some of these games, so the the, the scenario only lets you carry three items, mm-hmm. and it reminded me of those games where like you can like in one item slot you can either have like you know a chainsaw or a page of a diary. And it's like in order to take this page of the diary, I have to drop my chainsaw. <laughs> Are you no. serious? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there there were no limitations like that, like you know, headgear, one headgear, one hand type of deal. So that that was nice. You could stuff as much as you want in that leather jacket he was walking around in. I guess it was like a Harry Potter jacket that had infinite pockets or something like that. Act, it, it, you only actually you're only allowed to carry three. Oh, and this one was it? Oh, yeah. maybe I cheated. Oh, cheated, cheater! I, cheat? I don't think oh, I ever I'm found thrilled. more than three anyway. I don't think I ever like, found more than. Three. It's a solo game, really. Who cares? Right. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but I don't know that I ever really found more than three at one point in time. Mm. Oh, I had a, I had a bunch at one point, and I had to make really? some tough decisions. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I had like five or six. Oh, then you, could you have dropped your money? That big wad of cash you were dry, walking around with? Who cared about that? I, I know, right? right? I'm like, <laughs> I'm definitely gonna need this at the very end. <laughs> I don't need that money. That's awesome. You are definitely right, Liz. That that sense of like uh, going through this this really evoked more of a video game than a. Like, I mean, it's a good marriage of text and video game, but in terms of, like, the overall feel and approach and the visual immersion of it, I definitely felt like I was walking through, like, a Broken Sword or, like, a Monkey Island or those kind of old school games. Uh, So there are two uh, games in particular that I wanted to – I don't know if you guys have played one or both of these. I know, Liz, that you have played Legacy of Dragonhold. So. I have it's there there's a lot of parallel, you know, it's you get it's basically a game that comes out of books. Uh Wendy, have you played Legacy of Dragon Hall? No, I have not. Uh, have you looked at it or I will be now. <laughs> <laughs> well, let uh <laughs> Liz is a big fan. Uh how did you think the how do you think these books compared to that other experience? I think for me, the thing that made it different was that, you know, Legacy of Dragon Hall is very much where you read the text there's a lot more effort at kind of creating that fantasy world textually. There's a lot more character building. Going. It's really trying to recreate like an RPG light experience. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can still pick up items. It's easier to co-op because you can read aloud. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas, you know, something like Captive, you really can't play that with another person unless you want to sit real close. <laughs> oh, <so. laughs> a date book. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> I could see this totally being broken up into like, okay, you get this part of the book and you get this, but not this particular adventure, but like designing them such that, you know, one person has one thing, one person has the other thing, and, and it's kind of a shared experience. And all right. So if I had one criticism about uh, the game, and it's not really a criticism, it's just kind of an observation. I feel like there's a kind of a missed opportunity that these games are only solo. I think these would be perfect co-op games if you could just kind of redesign them a little bit, get a couple characters. The reason why I thought of Legacy of Dragonhold because they do have this kind of system that allows for co-op where one person can go and then the other person has to activate before the first person could go again, blah, blah, blah. I think this would be a great fit for this. I mean, do you feel like do you feel the same way, Liz, or is this a little bit too limited in terms of a system for that kind of thing? I would say no. If I first of all, I'm inherently selfish. I like making all decisions <laughs> myself. Oh, a type. So, I mean, in in the spirit of honesty, it's just true. Um, I I actually prefer. I think Legacy of Dragon. I played it with my boyfriend. I played it by myself, and I've had fun with both. But I I do prefer to just engross myself in the story, and just go. And you know, one of the things I liked about Captain was that it just totally sucked me in immediately, and I was just like racing through that book. Like, let's go to this room. Let's go to that room. Let's go. To that room. Take a note here. Find a clue there. Let's go. And 
for me, that pacing, you know, it's it's really best suited, at least for me, to solo gaming, just because then I can go at the speed that I want, or I can slow down and then look for some, a secret as slowly as I want. See, for me, I think it's because it's in a, a graphic novel format. I think that it would be it's, – it's built for solo for me. I don't think I would want to sit there with someone else and share in book form something like this. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm just thinking – off the cuff, like trying just in my head right now, trying to share this with someone, and I, I think like Liz, I'd be like, okay, just just move away, let me do this. <laughs> okay, let the grown ups talk, <laughs> you know, like, like that kind of deal. You know, I, I think this would this is because it's something you know I, I can I was uh, when I was going through captive, it was something I was doing you know by myself. It was kind of mellow. It was later at night, you know, when I was kind of unwinding, and it was a nice way to kind of put an end to the evening for me. Um, you know, before, like right before I went to bed or something like that. So it was kind of it was kind of cool to just kind of de-stress and just kind of slow it down a little bit. Um, and I don't think I'd be able to do that with another person. I think that it would it would hype me up too much. And I'm like, just stop, just stop. I want to look at this panel. So you, know? you really said, feel though, like the... go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, you know, well, it is a book that I want. I read it and I immediately wanted to give it to my boyfriend and have him read it. Oh yeah, I definitely want to share it with other people and then maybe discuss yeah. later, kind of like we're doing right now. But I don't necessarily want to discuss in the moment. Exactly. Uh, kind of like it's it's kind of like sometimes some video games from the same way. You know, when I'm playing a video game uh, with two players, sometimes I'm like, "Wait a minute, I want to look here. What are you doing?" Right. So, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So sometimes I like I, I play video games with my daughter. Sometimes and I'm like, "Where are you going? No, 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 mommy wants to look at this. Come back, come back, come back." And I'm like, "Oh, there it goes." <laughs> so what yeah. you're saying is this is a perfectly crafted solo experience. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, AJ, I'll be very happy to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for summing it up in little words. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and then the last thing that I could compare this to in terms of uh, games we're familiar with is Time Stories. Uh, Liz, I know you have not played Time Stories. When, Wendy, how about you? I've not actually played it, but I watched a lot of videos of people playing it to decide if I wanted it or not, and I'm, I'm on the cusp. It is my number three or four game of all time. Somewhere around really? That. Yes. Oh, my goodness. It, it, it's I, I heart Time Stories. I'm all over every new scenario that comes out. Uh, this book, it, f- it definitely felt like time stories on mm. the go. So I, I can, mm. they, um, they, what you call it? Like it, it says so on the Kickstarter page that this is a book that you could read on an airplane mm-hmm. or you could, you know, just take it and it's, and it, it, it's actual game. Like you have stats and you have stuff to right. keep track of and all this kind of stuff. I can, I can even imagine like them making like a companion app, like a really simple one that kind of keeps track of your character on your phone, which mm-hmm. is actually mm-hmm. what I ended up doing. Uh, cause I didn't want to like write in the book because I want to pass it along. Oh and, no, I had a pad. Yeah. I had a little pad. Yeah, I don't want to okay. deface. I don't want to deface the book. This thing is gonna get circulated. <laughs> that was that was the first thing. I, I that was one of the first things I thought of. I opened up the book and I'm like, I'm not gonna write in this book. Are they crazy? <laughs> right? Even if they like put a little maybe dry erase section in there, that would have been cool too. You know, just you can erase it when you're done. But I was like, my eyes were like biggest. I was like, what? Write in a book? What? I'm a teacher, you don't write in books. What? <laughs> what? Are you I write books all the time, but. Well, uh, <laughs> well those are scholarly minute, notes you're writing the, the... hold on no because the notes of your if you can get a book that your teacher wrote notes in and then see what they were thinking when they had the book like that's a valuable thing i watched harry potter i saw what they wrote in those books oh that's true sectum uh, semper, semper or whatever oh my god did i spoil something no i did not okay <laughs> so um, alert. Just for those of you who are listening, by the way, the character sheet is super easy to replicate just on a piece of notebook mm-hmm. paper. This is yeah. not a complicated character sheet, oh, no. so you don't need to worry about photocopies or, like, extreme computing. It's very simple. You could probably Yeah, I, even, I just took a yeah. piece of loose leaf and just yeah. literally scratched some things down. It was super easy. And I used my phone because I always have my phone on me because I'm a 20th century millennial. Uh, so... Uh, <laughs> ouch. So, uh, uh anyway i'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying anything not that, yet liz is like way younger than me and she's using pencil and paper <laughs> so uh yeah, yeah she's, so it was she's like she studies latin and things like that so she's all about the old timing she might use papyrus for all we know that's true that is true. i have oh. studied it i have not used it for actual <laughs> purposes she has her <laughs> she has her scrolls at home her captive <laughs> scrolls with her quill and ink <laughs> that so, would be awesome uh, actually i should just take that up just just for fun. 
So it, this is definitely time stories in a book. Like there's a lot of stuff that goes into the time stories experience. There's the the multiple pathways and there's looking for clues and there's looking at the, the visuals of the cards and everything. And, uh, you know, time stories, it's definitely fuller. I mean, it's a whole board game and it's a giant deck of cards. I mean, you're, you're looking at two or 300 plus cards in, in a typical deck. Uh, and so this one, you're not getting as robust a thing, but you're definitely getting that problem solving. You're definitely getting the false finishes. You're definitely getting the pass not taken oh i should have buffed this that that's that oh i should have taken this item next time i run through i'm gonna get that item uh and even at the end there's like false uh dot 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 spoiler 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 i i love time stories it's one of my favorite things i will i will play it as i'll play it solo i'll play it with a group i'll play it on skype whatever however i can get it this gift this definitely gave me that feeling and so I'm I'm, re- I'm I'm talking myself into vacuum. I'm not as well just <laughs> while we're well, recording know, the podcast. You're gonna, talking I'm me into time stories now, right? Now. <laughs> right? I'm like I'm gonna go check out time stories. Um, I haven't played time stories, but from the videos that I've watched of time stories, when I'm try- when I've been trying to decide it, now that you've mentioned it, it does um, based on the videos that I've seen. You know, looking at I've seen videos where they're pulling out the cards and they're examining it for clues. You know, and and you have to share with other people the clues or whatever. And that's that's the same thing. And and the false leads. I can't tell you how many times. In, in this in this uh, novel, I felt like I was like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna find my daughter, and then the wheels yeah. fell off. I was like, <laughs> what just happened? Yep. Right. So there were a lot of false false leads, and I, I was I was all euphoric, and then I was oh man. What what? So uh, yeah, so I think those are the those are the things in board gaming that we would associate with a game with a, a product like this. I mean, I hesitate to even call it a game. It's just more like an experience or a product or something like that. Uh, so I guess general impressions, like overall impressions, take homes, positives, any negatives. I mean, do you guys have any kind of summary thoughts in terms of the of the graphic novel adventures? Well, I can tell you, out of the five that they're offering. When uh, when I was looking into it before uh, it arrived, this was the one that I was least interested in, mm. uh, just mm-hmm. because of the uh, the art style and the theme. This was the one that I was least interested in. So the fact that you know this turned out the way that it did, and the other ones were more appealing to me, um, it just it just you know it it ha- has to grab you, right? I mean, there's every style. I mean, even the artwork in each of these uh, graphic novels is different. You know, you got the Sherlock Holmes one, which is more a little like bubbly and cartoony. Um, you've got the uh, the Western one, which I think was a little more gritty, but still a little cartoony, I think. Uh, and then you got the the werewolf one, which I think was a little more in line with this one, which was a little darker. And even the the um, the Japanese one was was really well done from you know all the different art styles. I think they did they hit the art styles very very well. Mm. Yeah, Loop Guru is actually the one that I'm really looking forward to. Yeah, I mean that I, one. That one looks ex- especially exciting to me. So these are not for kids. <laughs> this is these are for teenagers and adults. Uh, this is tw- a definitely twelve plus product. There's some uh, you know difficult themes. There's some gore. Uh, I'm not sure about the other kind of graphic content, but I'm guessing that because of the uh, age range, you might get a little bit risque. So uh, buyer beware. Absolutely. Uh, which is a draw for some people. <laughs> so. yeah, like everybody, now, other people are like, "Ooh, okay, I'm I'm back in just on that." Oh, yeah. yeah, for me, I thought these games were uh, captive. Really, really sucked me in right away. I had a great first evening playing it, and then that was like my really excited period. And then I had like a more calm, like let's go back through and find everything phase with it, and then I was done. So I think if you're going to think about backing it. I loved the experience. You have to accept that it's going to be an ephemeral one because you are going to finish it. You also have to be, I think, patient because there are a couple little exploration loops and stuff where if you forget where you've been or you miss like a, l- a little number and you can't find an item, it can really burn you. And so you have to be okay with getting stuck occasionally and being willing to kind of work through. Yeah, for me, that was that 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 little section that we talked about that was unclear about those numbers. And um, until I, I reached out to you guys and we actually discussed this and I was like, duh, gotta look at the numbers. Um, I was, I was, I was stuck in a loop and I could not get out. And it was very frustrating to me. And I had, to, I, I had to put it down a couple of times and walk away. I was about to rage quit. And I don't know that I've ever rage quit a book before, but uh, that was about to happen. <laughs> and then, uh, and then once it became clear that, you know, the, those little hidden numbers are something that we needed to go into, then it became – it was almost like Charles Dickens. It was the best of times and the worst of times, except in reverse. It was the worst of times, and all of a sudden it was like, oh, okay, here we go now. <laughs> Everything is so sunny now. 
not really. It was captive, but <laughs> not in that book. <laughs> not in that book. <laughs> But I'll just I'll just go at a problem forever until I solve it. Mm-hmm. So I mean I'm th- these books are are exactly right for my gaming personality. Mm-hmm. I think for so. me it fits into uh, I wouldn't say if I, if I'm like if I'm sitting there and I want to play a game I don't necessarily think that I would think oh let me pick up Captive. This would be something more that I would keep on my nightstand or like uh, Jason mentioned earlier grab like if I'm going on a trip or something even a beach read this might even be a good beach read. Mm-hmm. You know, because you're just sitting in one place and you can just go through these these stories and, and whatnot. So this would be something I would take uh, to a hotel or on a trip or something like that, uh, keep on the nightstand. But it wouldn't be something I would say, you know what, I want to play something and, and necessarily take this out. So it, it, it's, it's a game, but it's kind of different. You know, it, it ha- I think it has its own – I think it's its own little place right now. Yeah, but I can't be that patient. I know that the <laughs> moment that, that that package comes – after the, you know when they when they ship the Kickstarter products, it, that's gonna be done. Like uh, no. I'll disappear sub. for about a week and, and then I'll the come sub. back and hmm? call the sub in. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that is our preview of the graphic novel adventures. We talked about Captive, and we, uh, to be clear, we have not read the other four novels, but we have at least two backers, and my hand is hovering over the back button as we speak. Uh, I'm probably going to back it, let's just be honest, guys. Uh, so what we're going to do is we are going to section this pod off. Uh, we are going to talk full spoilers uh, of Captive. If you may have read the French version or the translated French version from a couple years ago, so you might enjoy that. Or if you just want to, you know, spoil yourself and hear a bunch of people geek out about a book, uh, please go ahead and listen to uh, the stuff after the outro music. So I would like to thank Liz and Wendy for joining us. Thank you very much for giving us your time, enthusiasm, and expertise uh, to here tonight. Anytime. Thank you. All right. So uh, that is going to do it for the regular pod episode. Uh, Go ahead and listen to Beyond the Music if you want to hear spoilers. Uh, If you want to catch up with me, I'm at ENGN underscore podcast on the Twitter. Uh, You can find me on Facebook, on BGG and all that good stuff. Uh, Your regular reminder to rate and review uh, Every Night is Game Night on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, all that good stuff. So uh, that is going to do it. We will be back, guess what, next week with yet another preview series episode. Uh, until then, this is Jason signing off. Later, everybody. And we are back beyond the spoiler wall. Let's talk captive. Let's talk spoilers. Uh, so how many times did you guys die? <laughs> oh, gosh, how terrible. I and admit in so nothing. many different ways. Yeah. So many different ways. <laughs> so what, what, what exactly uh, did you get caught? Was it on the that second floor, like after the cell phone conversation? Was that yes. where you got caught? Yeah. Yes. yes. The dead body in the hallway. Yes. Yeah. Because you have the cell phone conversation and it like roots you upstairs and you don't, it doesn't tell you, most of the panels tell you, you can go back to this panel to backtrack. But and there, you once you hit the cell phone conversation, it's like you get trapped upstairs. Yes. Right. And I, I even remember it was panel number 81 because I was there forever. <laughs> <laughs> it is like, I should have gone out and played it in the lotto in some form because it is ingrained in my brain. It was panel 81 was like my nemesis. It was my nemesis. It was my kryptonite. I think it would even had a green shade to it to be my kryptonite. But That's exactly what it had. Where the dead bodies were after the the, the different uh, st- uh, things that happened. I'm surprised that it didn't matter whether you saved the guy or didn't save the guy. And maybe it was an achievement. I'm not sure. It is an achievement. It is okay. Oh, okay. I don't remember that achievement. But I was like, oh, okay. He dies. He doesn't die. But uh, but there was there. There were some ways that I died that really took me by surprise. Like I was like, oh, I didn't expect that twist in this game. I think there was uh, one time when I was walking in the garden and I followed something into the woods and like this black gas. I don't know right. if you guys got that one. This black gas engulfed me. And next thing you know, blit, I was dead. Oh, we, I, was we, like, I think Liz and I did every single panel. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, my gosh, this black gas now got me. There were a couple of times where I found my daughter and died anyway. Yes. Uh, I was like, oh, come on. <laughs> really? I found her. 
Mm-hmm. Right. Or like, you know that guy like chokes you out while you're telling her to uh-huh. run away. Like, go, run away. Go. You don't even know. Did she get away? Did she not? Help me, help. <laughs> <laughs> run, honey, run. Blitz. But for me, the spider was the one that just ticked me off the most. Because like you have the snake and oh. then you get the spider. It's like you beat the snake and you're like, okay, God made it. I beat a creepy animal. And then suddenly, da da that is no okay it just be over <laughs> yeah when nature attacks part four right do <laughs> not do not go after the creepy animal on the cabinet in that well, room. weren't there also like a, there was I cats know. i think in there some cats that were attacking too it was a yeah. dog it was like a no. giant iguana and that was the first thing you saw or like some like it wasn't even an iguana it's like this mutant reptile thing it's like what and it's and like the option was like to shoo it away are you serious uh-huh. Shoot it away. I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> I tried it, and then I got attacked by multiple reptiles and then a spider. It was... <laughs> Where's the run like hell option? Yeah, that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, so there was there was so many creative ways to die. I, I mean, there was so many creative ways to lose my health. I didn't realize that, you know, banging my knee could cost that much health. Oh, my God, but, uh, yeah. I was like, like how much? How much? Can... Yes, the fireplace. Yeah, like I thought I was gonna find something good. Nope, sorry, you you cough on dust, lose yeah. a lot of health. I was like, <laughs> what now? I guess because it's ancient dust. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> was the was the compass the only useless item, or the item that didn't figure into anything else? <laughs> uh, not that I found. I didn't find anything to do with that compass. I was like, what am I walking around with these things for? But I did I, find the medicine cabinet at one point. Yeah. So I did get some health back from my medicine cabinet from my uh, was it aspirin the, aspirin the quote unquote. Oh, you didn't find the light? Oh, the lighter was no, the awesome. Lighter Are you kidding was cool. me? I liked, I liked the lighter effect. Yeah, that that, that lighter saved me, saved oh. my butt because like my dexterity was five, and I kept on running into if if dexterity six, don't die. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I know that the the one thing that annoyed me was that combination lock. Okay, because you didn't have like. A... Well, I finally figured out the combination, but then I was like, oh, there's nothing really too much in here. So the strange room, I don't think I found really too much in the strange room. Mm-hmm. Mm. So I was just like, wow, I went through all of that and there's not a whole lot in the strange room. But that, Well, the, yeah. the lighter was in there. Oh, was the lighter yeah. in there? Yeah, the lighter was in the strange room. That, that room. It's also really surprising like what items end up being useful later. Like I held on to the billiard ball. Oh, yeah. And I was really glad later. <laughs> totally yeah. saved my butt. <laughs> like, yeah, I'll just pick up this billiard ball. You never know. I, I totally yeah. passed by the book because that was it. I had too many items. I had the butcher knife. I had each key was an item like that. You don't get like a separate key ring or whatever it was. Uh, mm-hmm. So like I, I you know, because I had the the labeled key and the yellow key or whatever it is. So I had to choose yeah. and I and I took the stupid butcher knife, <laughs> that cursed butcher knife. And you not had the, a gun? Not the very ball. <laughs> Although in reality, like you should be able to carry all the keys. It's kind of like Skyrim. Like, yes, you can carry too many items, but. You can have unlimited arrows and unlimited money. Yes. It should have been I, like that. I cheated. I cheated and, and I, I imagined up a uh, key ring. No, no one's going to hate you for that. No one's going to hate you for nah. that. Nah. No one's going to hate you. Well, there's also that, the key that had the, uh, what do you call it, the lanyard thing. Yes. So why would they all just fit on the lanyard thing? Thank you. That's, <laughs> That's very silly. Uh, so, like, were there parts of the book that you didn't enjoy? I wish there was a little – and I know why they couldn't, but I wish there was a little more dialogue. There was a lot of just kind of him standing there looking around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so I wish there was a little bit more than just him standing looking around. You know, that yeah, kind I of was... gave me envisions of like the early, really, really early Tomb Raider games where you were just kind of like – Lara Croft was just running around. She's running around. And there was nothing mm-hmm. there, just kind of running around. And I was like, come on, Lara, find something. You're mm-hmm. an adventurer. So that, there was a there was a lot of that. He, there was a lot of the the rooms with him just kind of walking in and standing there. So I wish that there was makes- like maybe even just a thought bubble, you know, like hmm, where should I go or something like that. You know what I mean? Right. Or like you go through a door and then there's like more doors. Mm-hmm. At times, my because you're not really in the house, you know, your memory of each room you go through isn't great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't. So I can't the floor you were on sometimes, I was like, wait, am I on the second floor? Am I bottom floor? Where'd I go? Yeah, but I was living for that flavor text. I loved all the little annexes in the back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was cool. That was cool. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, how do I get? How do I get another one? How do I get another one? So, oh yeah, that was my favorite. Mm-hmm. And then the uh, the newspaper clipping one. I was like, what does it say underneath the newspaper clipping? Let me see if I can try to figure it out. Yeah, I was particularly into the wife's diary. Yeah, that was cool. Like, that whole sequence is really cool. 
It's cool. Yeah. They 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 did a really good job of that, you know, keeping it keeping it different with that trying to give you all these little like perks for doing things and that was that was really cool. Whenever I got one of those, I was like, ooh, it was like it was like, you know, it was like candy. It was like, oh, I get to look at an annex. Ooh. You know? <laughs> so they're rubbing my hands together. Ooh. Right. Wow, all right. So is, here's a question. Is it cheating if you've read an annex from a previous game <laughs> so that you know information in a future game, but you didn't find the annex in that game? Uh, I mean, how did that how did that apply? Like, for example, when you find the wife, it's like, what is her name? Yeah. But I, I already knew her name from a previous game. Oh, so when it says it, you say, yes. oh, yes, I did. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it, it's not cheating because that uh, – well, it, it's not cheating in time stories. Like that's the game in time stories. Like it, it's how much you remember from the previous runs and then it goes into the next run. Mm. So you're not starting from scratch. I, it, I, mean, I played it, they, it. Yeah. I played it with that I didn't know that information. That's how I played it, but I was just I was trying not to. I in my in my head I wasn't sure if it was cheating or not, so I, I erred on the side of it wasn't cheating. I mean, you already you're know, so good. Like you already know. Like, what are you going to do? Go into the room again and get attacked by the spider again? I mean, it's the same thing. You know, you know from previous runs not to go in the room with a stupid spider. So what's the difference between you know the having full knowledge of the spider and having full knowledge of the annex? It's the same thing. You're true. True. I also sort of imagined, like, because you are apparently someone special with a special ring, I, like, sort of assumed, I, like, pretended I was coming into my powers. Mm. There you you went Super Saiyan? And, like, was therefore more intuitive or something. There you go. Role playing. Mm. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I, I played it without, so there were times when it was like, oh, if you know this, don't go here. And I'm like, wait, I didn't know this in this particular game, so I'll just I'll just move forward with it out it. Then maybe I would not have died so much if I had been like, no, I know that information. Let me move on. I probably still would have died. Oh, I cheat. I'm, I'm, I don't care. Uh, did you guys <laughs> find the scythe? No, nope. I did not find the scythe. I didn't find I mean, it. I, I mean, I found it eventually, but it was like only because I'd done and reading the whole book and everything and studying every single passage. And I'm like, oh, there's a side. It is really well hidden. That, that thing really made me angry. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're anyway. there. Anyway, so thank you guys for uh, going into the Spoilerville. Uh, I'm, not, I'm, not gonna, I'm probably going to chop it up a little bit just for length's sake, but uh, I think that'll be fun. Thank you.